there's a good chance that the unfortunate passengers inside this ambulance are on their way to the X-ray lab. Since X-rays were discovered about a century ago, this odd form of radiation has helped doctors pinpoint the damage and speed the recovery of thousands of accident victims. But X-rays have other uses, some of them a long way from your local hospital. New technology has enabled astronomers to take X-ray pictures of the sky. Working at the high end of the energy range, scientists are uncovering a universe full of unexpected wonders. They found black holes, exploding stars, and colliding galaxies. Considering the way we use X-rays in medicine, it seems appropriate that the X-rays we receive from space are showing us the way to cosmic accident sites. that collide, stars that explode, things falling into black holes. This is the strange and wonderful universe revealed to us by high energy radiation from space. The people who study this are X-ray astronomers and their colleagues who work with ultraviolet, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. All these kinds of radiation are invisible. There's really only one part of this energy range that we can experience directly, and that's the ultraviolet. As most of us know all too well, ultraviolet from the sun can seriously burn unprotected human skin. But it can also show us an unexpected side of our local star. For years, astronomers have puzzled over the outer atmosphere of the sun. The corona, as it's known, is the thing that looks so dramatic during a total solar eclipse, when the moon hides the sun's blindingly bright surface. The corona's temperature is in the millions of degrees, and that's extremely odd, because the actual surface of the sun is only a few thousand degrees. Where does all that extra heat come from? In an effort to find out, Astronomers use ultraviolet sensitive telescopes aboard spacecraft, and they're finding that the sun looks very different in ultraviolet light. These curious loops and filaments on the solar surface seem to be part of the puzzle. They're made of electrically charged gases or plasma, the same stuff lightning bolts are made of. And just as we can't predict the path of a lightning bolt, the exact behavior of the solar plasma is a mystery to us. But the ultraviolet images are helping us to see the enormously complex electric and magnetic fields that stir up the surface of the sun. But ultraviolet astronomers are scanning the night skies too. Using an orbiting instrument called FUSE, which stands for the FAR Ultraviolet Spectroscopic Explorer, William Blair is studying the ecology of the Milky Way galaxy. The FUSE telescope looks at a wavelength range of ultraviolet light that is, that is uh, somewhat shorter than where the Hubble telescope can observe. So in many ways, we complement uh, what Hubble can do by covering a slightly different wavelength range. Our telescope performs uh, spectroscopy as opposed to taking pictures. We use a device called a spectrograph that breaks the light up uh, for analysis. You don't hear as much about the spectrographs, uh, but that's really where the quantitative work of astronomy gets done by analyzing light with these tools, these specialized tools. Blair and his students analyze the light of mysterious objects called quasars. These seem to be clouds of white-hot material surrounding enormous black holes billions of light years distant. But Blair's team isn't studying the quasars themselves. They're interested in the subtle alterations to the quasar's light that are produced by invisible clouds of thin hot gas that lie between the quasar and us. And they've discovered a complex flow of gas in and around our galaxy 
the Milky Way. We hope to build up a detailed picture of what the interstellar medium looks like, what its composition is as a function of distance away from the sun. It appears that there's a very dynamic relationship between supernova explosions, regions of star formation where massive stars and the winds from those stars are also blowing out. So you have two effects, the winds of stars blowing out and then supernova explosions uh, driving material up into this halo of the galaxy. Sometimes it's called a galactic fountain where material over time is blown up out of the galaxy and rains back down in, goes through more star formation and there's a circulatory system, if you will, in the galaxy. That's one of the things FUSE is, is being used to study but we can't just look at one star here and one star there and make those kind of determinations. It's from the ensemble uh, study of many, many sight lines that we can piece together that kind of a picture. Probably the most famous spacecraft that's used for ultraviolet studies is the Hubble Space Telescope. It may be better known for the pictures it takes using visible light, but Hubble can observe in the ultraviolet range too. Among other things, its ultraviolet capability is helping astronomers understand the remains of exploded stars. The prize example of this kind of stellar wreckage is the Crab Nebula. If you're interested in energetic events anywhere in the universe, you want to know about quasars? You want to know about active galactic nuclei? You want to know about the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy? You want to know about all of that stuff? You have to understand the physics of what happens when you have particles moving at close to the speed of light in the presence of magnetic fields. And the crab is a place that you can go and see that, up close and personal. And it's quite a sight. The Crab Nebula has fascinated stargazers since Chinese astrologers witnessed the original explosion in the year 1054. Ultraviolet astronomers like William Blair are still enjoying the view nearly a thousand years later. You can imagine taking a star about 1.4 times the mass of our sun and cramming that material into a region uh, just to maybe 15 kilometers in diameter and spinning that thing around 30 times a second. That's basically what we have in the center of the Crab Nebula. Uh, that spinning pulsar has very intense magnetic fields, and so as it spins around, it drags those magnetic fields around as well, and it is the magnetic fields spinning around that impart their energy to the surrounding nebula. So for instance, there are some wisps of diffuse gas in close to the pulsar that the Hubble telescope has been able to actually follow their changes, uh, dancing in time and slowly moving out. And you can see the energy being imparted to the gas surrounding the pulsar. In astronomy, most of the time, at least if you do the kind of astronomy looking beyond our solar system, if you look at something today as a young astronomer and then wait for your career and come back and look at it again 40 or 50 years from now and say, hey, I can tell that that changed. You think that you're working on a dynamical system. Man, that actually changed over the lifetime of an astronomer. That's changing fast. And now here we have this object that despite the fact it's this huge thing, changes on time scales of days. That if you wait for longer than about a week, between the times that you look at it, it will have changed so much that you can't even tell what's what anymore. God, oh, it's fun. I, that's, that's the only way to describe it. Only extremely hot objects emit ultraviolet radiation in any quantity. So we tend to see the biggest and hottest